Eternal Father of mercy and compassion, we pray that you may give us inspiration and wisdom in this presentation in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to welcome you all in a very special way on this special occasion as we progress with our studies. And today we want to focus on this uh, topic, the actual difference between the SDA and the Catholic Church, truth and error. We are comparing two churches. We are comparing uh, two major religions, or not two major religions, but two major denominations. Uh, maybe probably it's actually good to say two major religions. We are dealing with the subject of uh, truth and error. There are quite a lot of uh, fundamental difference between the Catholics and the Seventh-day Adventists, and one of them is actually the first one, is the mark of authority. The mark of authority, we are talking about what the Catholic believe is their soul of authority and what the, uh, the SDA believe is their soul of authority. I'm sure you enjoyed this presentation as I've enjoyed it. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. You realize that when the SDA are talking or the Seventh-day Adventists, they believe that the Bible and the Bible alone, they believe they are guided by the Bible. They believe in what Bible say. They believe that there is no authority which is higher than the Bible. It thus says the Lord cannot be substituted by anything. It thus says the Lord carries more weight than anything else. They also believe in the book of First Peter chapter, uh, the, uh, uh, Second Peter chapter one verse nineteen. That's Second Peter chapter one verse nineteen. We have a more sure word of prophecy where we unto we do well that we should take heed as unto the light that shineth in dark place until the day dawn and uh, the day star ariseth in your hearts, knowing this first that no prior prophecy is of any private interpretation for the prophets came not in all time by the will of men but all men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So they believe that the Bible and the Bible alone they are guided by the word of God. They have a full understanding of what the Bible says in the book of Psalms chapter 138 verse 2 that God has exalted his word above his name. So there is nothing as special as the word of God in, the, in Christianity. The word of God is actually central to all worship. So when you are talking about the Adventist church, the Adventist church believe that the Bible, the Bible alone is the sole authority. I want to take a quotation uh, from one of uh, the writers of Adventist, uh, first, uh, that's uh, Selected Messages, book one, page 416, the Bible and the Bible alone is to be our creed, the sole bound of union. All who bow to this holy word will be in harmony. Our own views and ideas must not control our efforts. Man is fallible, but God's word is infallible. In other words, man can die, man can change, man is unreliable, but God's word is very reliable. Instead of wrangling with other, uh, one another, let men exalt the Lord. Let us meet all opposition, as did our master saying, it is written. Let us lift up the banner on which is inscribed, the Bible, our rule of faith and discipline. So, this is very interesting. Is the Bible and the Bible alone. Based on the words of Jesus Christ, that's what Seventh-day Adventist is all about, the Bible. In the Bible alone, sola scriptura, as Martin Luther said, the reformers were saying, let the Bible and the Bible alone to speak. That's why they believe, taking from the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, it is written. Matthew chapter 4, verse 7, it is written. Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, it is written. Whenever we are dealing with the subjects of worship, we depend upon the written word. And thus says the Lord cannot be replaced by and thus says the church. That's a very serious uh, uh, claim. In fact, that's a very serious belief which you find in the Seventh Day Adventist, the Bible and the Bible alone as the sole authority. It says in Review and Herald, May 4, 1897, the Bible and the Bible alone is to be the rule of our faith. It is a leaf from the tree of life and by eating it, by receiving it into our minds, we shall grow strong to do the will of God. By our Christ-like character, we shall show that we believe the word, that we cleave to the Bible as the only guide to heaven. So shall we be living epistles known and read of all men, bearing a living testimony to the power of true religion, the Bible and the Bible alone. 
what you realize is that the beliefs of the seven day adventists are reflected in their obedience uh, to the fourth commandment. The fourth commandment, which we read from Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In other words, you find that what makes them to be very different is their belief that God of heaven created the world in six days and he rested on the seventh day. And therefore, he commanded humanity to obey the seventh day. And in keeping the seventh day, it is in honor to what God did that he created the world in six days and he rested. Therefore, because they believe they belong to the God of heaven, they keep the Sabbath of the Lord. This is very important, my brothers and sisters. The authority of God is seen in that he created the world. And now those who follow him, who follow what he has done, he rested and he commanded that humanity that belongs to me should rest. Therefore, the Sabbath is a sign of the authority of the God of heaven because he's created the world and he has given it to humanity. That's why in Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 2 of the Bible, say, Moreover, I also I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between them and me that they might know that I'm the Lord that sanctified them. And then verse 20, And hallow my Sabbath, and they shall be a sign between me and you that you may know that I am the Lord your God. So this is uh, what the Bible says about the Seventh-day Adventists and this is what they say. The Bible authority is the only difference. In fact, now let me actually come to this while comparing the two. The Bible authority is the only difference which makes everything different. The authority of the Bible. Now the question is, what do Catholics believe and what is their belief based upon? As for the Seventh-day Adventists, the Bible and the Bible alone is their sole authority. But when it comes to the Catholic, it's actually a different thing altogether. And this is what makes the difference to be different. And the difference is a major difference. You come to these religions, they are incomparable. They are actually going two different ways completely. And they will not meet. Why? Because they are focusing on two different gods altogether. The God of the Catholic and the God of the Seventh-day Adventists, these religions, their foundation is actually very, very different as we are going to learn. Now let's actually start with this quotation from Signs of the Times, February 19, 1894. It says, the Roman Church claims that the Pope is invested with supreme authority over all bishops and pastors. Uh, this claim of supremacy was once denied by Protestants. They took the position that the Bible and the Bible alone constituted the rule of faith and doctrine, that the word of God is the only unerring guide for human souls, and that it is unnecessary and harmful to make the words of priests and prelates instead of the word of God. Now, when you come to Catholicism, there is something that, uh, that is very important. The word of the Pope, the, in fact, the first authority is the tradition, the second is the word of the Pope. The third is the council of the cardinal. And if there is anything to say, they consider the Bible. That's why Pope Leo, the, 11th, the 13th, he will say, we hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. To them, they have the place of God Almighty. Remember, this is a claim. They believe that uh, they cannot... Uh, be guided by the Bible. They believe that they, their authority is above the Bible. They believe that uh, the Bible is nothing. The Bible is relegated into a fourth position. In other words, they don't consider the Bible anyway because to them, what's important is their tradition, the word of the Pope, the council of the Cardinal. Those things are more important. That's why they said in the in the Canon and Tradition, page 264, the authority of the church could be therefore not be bound to the authority of the scriptures because the church had changed the Sabbath to Sunday not by command of Christ but by its own authority. So this church claims to have a lot of power uh, to the extent that they can change the Bible. So now the question is, if the Bible is the word of God, which power can contend with God except the power of the devil? Now we ask ourselves, what exactly is the foundation of the Catholics? The foundation of Catholicism is actually Babylon. Babylon, which is actually false worship based on the tradition taken from Babylon and imported into the church. Catholicism being the amalgamation of truth and error. And then we come to this compromised faith called Catholicism. But now let's actually compare this. You say later from uh, October 28, 1895 from uh, C.F. Thomas says, of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change was her act, the change of the Sabbath from Sabbath to Sunday. And the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority 
in religious matters. And the power is that she changed the Sabbath from Sabbath to Sunday by her own authority and said, because if I was not above the Bible, I would not have done that. So now, the, as we have seen, the fundamental difference is that Adventists, they believe that the Bible in the Bible alone, Catholicism believe that they have got power to change the Bible. But now let's look at the next uh, uh, quotation from Catholic Record, September 1, 1923. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is a proof of that fact. So now, if I'm going to go to church on Sunday to Catholic with my Bible, what am I doing? Because the church is above the Bible, basically it means nothing. Uh, they don't believe in the God of heaven. They don't believe in the uh, authority of the word of God. That's exactly what it's all about. But now let's look at this publication. St. Catherine, May 21, 1995, Catholic Church Sentinel. It says, perhaps the boldest thing, the most revolutionary change the church ever did have happened in the first century. The Sabbath <coughs> was changed from Saturday to Sunday, not from any direction noted in the scripture, but from the church sense of its own power. So the church has got a lot of power because it changed the Sabbath, not based on the Bible, but its own authority. They are bragging about their power. So this church is so powerful, and this power is reflected in that it attempts to change the Bible. So therefore, it actually makes it very clear that you know this power is not controlled by the word of God. It's controlled by another external power. It says... People who think that the scripture should be the sole authority should logically become Seventh-day Adventists and keep Saturday holy. So what actually that means is that there are only two churches. It's either you are a Seventh-day Adventist or you keep, this and you keep the Sabbath. Or you are a Catholic and you keep Sunday. All those who keep Sunday, they are followers of Catholic Church. All those who keep the Sabbath and believe the Bible and the Bible alone, then they actually follow the Bible. If they believe the Bible and the Bible alone is the sole authority, following what exactly it says. Because even in the, in, the, in the Sabbath faith, there are many people who keep the Sabbath, but they don't actually believe in the Bible. Evangelism, page 234 says, the change of the Sabbath is a sign or mark of the authority of the Romish church, those who understand the claims of the fourth commandment choose to observe the false Sabbath in place of the true, are they by pay, paying homage to that power by which alone is commanded. Therefore, if we decide to disobey the Sabbath and keep Sunday, when we know the truth, we are giving homage to this power that is contending against the power of God. The mark of the beast is the papal Sabbath, which has been accepted by the world in the place of the day of God's appointed. So the whole world today is wandering after the beast as we have covered before. The whole world today is keeping the day which God has not sanctified. They are following in the footsteps of Catholicism. And this is the major difference between the church of God and the church that belongs uh, to the evil one. In that uh, the, 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 the followers of God, they say the Bible and the Bible alone. But the followers of the evil one, they believe that, uh, that those who subscribe to this uh, with their clear conscience, when they know the truth, they believe that they can worship anyhow. And they believe that the God can accept it. But no, it doesn't work like that. Catholicism is a power that is fighting the authority of God because the authority of God is his word. We learn from the book of Daniel chapter 7, 25, and he shall speak great words against the most high and shall weigh out the sins of the most high and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given unto his end until time, times, and dividing of time. So which power can claim to change the commandments of God? Which power can persecute and kill the saints of the Most High? Which power can attempt to change the commandments of God except the power that is fighting against God. And we know that in the universe, there are only two contending forces. It says that is truth is the truth and error that are contending. And truth is the word of God. Error is anything that fights the word of God. And Catholicism is an authority that is dominate, that has dominated the world. And the Bible is very clear that the whole world wanders after the beast. But now the question is, 
what does the Catholic say about the Adventist doctrine? I think that helps us to understand the difference. We learn from uh, Daily Lantern uh, Apologetics Reflections. This is actually a Jesuit publication talking about the Seventh-day Adventists. They say, Seventh-day Adventists cannot change its views on the Catholic being the war of Babylon without admitting that it was wrong on Sunday worship. Okay, that's fine. So they are saying that uh, the Adventists say Catholicism is a war of Babylon. Why do they say Catholicism is a war of Babylon? Now, they are saying that uh, it cannot admit that Sunday worship is not the mark of the beast without changing its views on the Jewish Sabbath. In other words, uh, the only way which Adventists can compromise and say Sunday is not the mark of the beast. They have to change their understanding of the, of the Seventh-day uh, uh, Sabbath. The Seventh-day Adventists cannot cease to be anti-Catholic without ceasing to be Seventh-day Adventism. Uh, what actually that means is that there is no way when Adventists and Catholics can eat in the same plate. There is no way when Adventists can sit down and listen to a sermon from a Catholic. Why? Because the two cannot mix. The two is as oil and water. The two cannot actually agree because they are not walking in the same way. In fact, the Bible gives us a clear understanding of these two churches. When you go to the book of Revelation chapter 12, we are talking of the Adventist faith or the remnant. When we are talking, go, go to Revelation chapter 17, we are talking to the war of Babylon, which is Catholicism uh, or the papal religion. And both churches are represented by a woman. When you go to chapter 17, it's actually a, a, a harlot. When you go to chapter 12 of Revelation, it's a pure woman. And the Bible is very clear that in Bible prophets, when we're talking about a woman, we are talking about a church as we learn from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2 and Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 2. The Jeremiah chapter 6 says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So the daughter of Zion is represented by a woman. And when you go to Revelation chapter 12, from verse 1, we're talking about this pure woman who is clothed with the sun, standing on the, on, her, on the moon, being guided by a crown of 12 stars, which are 12 disciples. This was represented, representing the early church, and the object of the dragon was to destroy this church. But however, when you go to, uh, to chapter 17, we are looking at the whole of Babylon, and I just want to read this one. It says, for context sake, it says, Revelation chapter 17 verse 4, And the dragon was arrayed in purple and scarlet colored and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So the woman of chapter 17, she's the mother. So she has got many that follow her. But the woman of chapter 12, we are not, uh, she's, she doesn't have daughters, yes, but there are no daughters there. We are just told of this woman and we are told of her children. But uh, we actually see the followers, uh, this one is a mother and she has got quite a lot of daughters as well. Now the question is, these daughters, in fact let me say, these daughters follow the teaching of Babylon of mystery Babylon, what exactly does she believe? There are quite a lot of things which Catholicism believe which have been accepted in the world by many religions. The first one is the salvation by works. Catholicism believe that you work hard for you to be saved. And the concept is that which is found in Genesis chapter 11 uh, from verse 3. The Bible says, and they said unto one another, go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So in the ancient, but not in the ancient Babylon, but in the Babylon of Nimrod, the desire was to save themselves. They believed that if they can make a tower, they can climb into the tower when the rain comes, then will not, they will not be destroyed by the rain, but they go above the tower. But you know, salvation is actually a free gift as we learn from reformers. In fact, the Bible makes it very clear in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 that we are saved by grace through faith, 
not of ourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any should boast. So I don't have to do anything to be saved. It's a gift that God has given me. And as I've been saved, I have accepted this gift. Then I'm given a new life where I live according to the will of God. Now, the other thing which is of a fundamental difference is uh, Christ priest of Rome. Uh, in, Babylon, uh, in Babylon, they believe that uh, the role of Christ as a priest has been abolished. Now I can confess my sins to anyone. But however, the Bible is very clear that... Uh, in First Thessalonians, in First Timothy chapter two, verse five, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. In Christ, in Catholicism, they confess to the priest, but in uh, in Christianity or in Adventism, there is only one mediator between us and God, and that Jesus Christ in heaven, who is our high priest. So we don't confess our sins to anyone. We confess our sins to God. Who can forgive as we learn from James chapter 5, 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And the effectual favor and prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And First John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. Who are we confessing to? To Jesus Christ who can forgive our, our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we don't depend upon anyone. We don't need a, a priest in between. But because Catholicism takes from the tradition of the Babylonian, they believe that you can't reach the chief God straight away. You have to go through many other gods. And also in Catholicism, they don't believe that the God of heaven created the world. That's why they don't keep the Sabbath. But they believe that the world evolved. Yet the Bible is very clear in the book of Psalms, chapter 33, verse 9, that God spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood still. God is the creator. And those who believe in God as a creator will be seen by keeping the Sabbath holy in honor to the God who created the world in six days. But now the question is, uh, what do they believe in Catholicism? They believe in the theory of evolution. Look at this, U.S. News World Report, November 4, 1996. Did God create mankind in his image, as the Bible says? Or did humans evolve from animals, as Darwin theorized nearly 150 years ago? This is the question which is asked. According to Pope John Paul II, evolution may be a better explanation. In other words, uh, they don't believe that God has created the world in six days. We have actually seen the problem of this in many Adventist pastors and theologians who have been educated by Catholics. They don't believe that God created the world in six days anymore. In other words, they are drinking from the cup of Babylon. And they said we should never, we should not interpret Genesis literally. If we cannot interpret Genesis literally, what then should we do? It actually means that God did not create the world in, God did not create the world in six days. There is no Sabbath. And remember, they don't believe in the Sabbath. It says the Sabbath was replaced by the worshipping of the sun. That's why they keep Sunday. Remember, the commandment is very clear that remember the Sabbath day is to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. It's not your Sabbath. It's the Sabbath of the Lord your God. But in Catholicism, because they don't believe the Bible, they have actually adopted the God of the Babylonian. They worship the sun God. So the major fundamental difference between Catholicism and the Seventh-day Adventists is the God that is worshipped. In Catholicism, they worship the sun. In Adventism, they worship the God of heaven. Now look at this, the Catholic world, March 1994, page 809. The sun was a foremost god with heathendom. The sun has worshippers at this present hour in Persia and other lands. There is, in truth, something royal kingly about the sun, making it a fit emblem of Jesus, the son of justice. Hence, the church in these countries would seem to have said, Keep the old pagan name. It shall remain consecrated, sanctified, and thus the pagan Sunday dedicated to Boulder become the Christian Sunday sacred to Jesus. So is there anything about Jesus there? No. It's all about sun worship. It's all about pagan worship. It's all about idol worship. It has nothing to do with the God of heaven. 
Catholicism believes in the immortality of the soul. The dead are not really dead as we covered last week. But the Bible is very clear that the living know that they shall die. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 9. Uh, but the dead know not anything. So when you are dead, you are dead. Catholic believe that there is a second chance. You go through purgatory, you go in the process of purification, and then your soul will go to heaven straight away. But however, the Bible does not teach that this is something which is heretical. You only find this in the Babylon. This is a wine of Babylon. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. There is hope to him that is joined with the living. And when we die, our love is forgotten, our hatred is gone, our envy is gone, everything is perished. There is no portion that we can do anything here on earth. Why? Because we are dead. Therefore, while we are still alive, it's time to repent and give our hearts to Jesus Christ. And in Catholicism, they believe in idol worship and image worship. Contrary to what the Bible says, remember the commandment is very clear in Exodus chapter 20 verse 4, that thou shalt not make unto thee any grieving image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is under the water. But uh, when you go to Catholicism, they have got images all over. They worship images. And the Bible is very clear. If ever there was a belief in the Bible and Catholicism, then you will not see any images. You will not see any sun worship. You will not see those priests who actually take the position of Jesus Christ. It is simply because this is not a religion of the Bible. It's a religion of the world. It's a religion of pagan. It's a religion that, uh, that seek to um, that uplift the doctrine which is contrary to the truth of the word. You know, we are told that the law of God is there. The law of God will be there until the end. That's what we learned from Matthew chapter 5, 17 and 18. That heaven and earth will pass, but not, jot, jot, no, not one jot, no one tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law of God. Jesus was obedient to the end. His church is obe will be obedient to the end. And those who fear Jesus Christ will be loyal to the Bible and the Bible alone. Now we understand that the foundation of Catholicism or the foundation of the Babylon is the authority of men, what the Pope say, what traditions say, is the word of men, the commandments which are manufactured by men, is the works of men, the law of men, the traditions of men. It has nothing to do with the word of God. But when we come to the word of church of God, we find that you know its authority is sola scriptura, the Bible and the Bible alone. The word of God, the love of God, the law of God, and the teachings are the teachings of God. Now the question is, which church should I choose? Should I be a Catholic? And my religion is tradition, the voice of the Pope, the voice of the Cardinal. Or should I be a Seventh-day Adventist and I will elevate the Bible in the Bible alone? Blessed are we in these final days. The context, the context is between the commandments of men and the commandments of God. We are going to choose. We are choosing every day, my brothers and sisters. And as for me today, I'll choose to keep the commandments of God. What is the difference between Catholicism and the Seventh-day Adventists? The real difference is the Bible, the authority of the Word of God, nothing else. If ever Catholicism will take God as its word, then all those things that we've been mentioning, they will leave them and they will follow the truth and the truth will save them. Now the question is, are we safe being in the Seventh-day Adventists? We are only safe by Christ being in our hearts, by depending on Christ Jesus and this word be, uh, becoming alive. In fact, this word living in our hearts and this word reflected in the way we conduct ourselves. For may the Lord help us to value the truth of the Bible in the Bible alone. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. May you forgive us where we have gone wrong. Give us grace to keep the truth. And when we know this truth, we'll be set free in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you. I look forward to your comments. Enjoy the Sabbath. Until we meet again in the next edition, continue to be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.